Entertaining and informative radio for the Sunshine State. It's now time for Connecting Caregivers with author, speaker, caregiver advocate, and talk show host, Linda Burhans, the gal who cares for caregivers. Good afternoon and welcome to Connecting Caregivers Radio on the show where you can find help and hope. With me, Linda Burhans, the gal who cares for caregivers with love, laughter, and lessons learned because I have plenty of all that stuff. And with me, as always, is my best friend, my co-host, and my sidekick, not psychic, Lynn Thornley. Hi, Lenny. How are you today? I'm doing okay. We're doing okay. We both had a little under the weather this week. Yes. And we're trying to get it together here. We're doing so, much better. Uh, yeah, it's tis the season. So, that, you know, that's something you guys got to be careful when you go out. Please use hand, hand sanitizer and all that stuff because the germs yeah. are everywhere. Wash your hair. Like The worst part is money. Yeah. And people don't think about that. I do because I use cash all the time. I don't like credit cards. I think you're better off with your credit card. Although then you got to touch those buttons. Dirty too. It's all just as dirty. <laughs> I, I don't know. know. I always keep that little hand sanitizer on the side of my purse. Yeah, I have one. So after I check out, I'm like, ah. But, you know, it still happens sometimes. Um, but this is a time of year we need to be careful for that. And and I want you to be careful, um, caregivers. And I want you to look out for your neighbors. Because at this time of the year, you may have some elderly neighbors that are home by themselves. And they even may be under a little bit under the weather and don't even know it. Or they may just be a little bit under the weather emotionally, and they just need some company. They just need somebody yes. to come by and, and stop by and spend a little time and bring them a little soup or something like that. Yeah. It's a big deal. It's really a big deal. So think Our about that. My friend Lois is flying home. Oh, she is. Today. She brought me over that fudge, that new fudge that everybody's making 30 seconds in the microwave. Yeah, business. what's the story? You take, well, she took peanut butter chips. You put them in the bowl in the microwave. 30 seconds, stir them. Then you take a can of icing, chocolate icing, and you add it to the chips and you stir it, put it in for 30 seconds more, stir it, put it in a pan and it's done. It's fudge. Yes. It's that was peanut easy. butter fudge, but you could do it with chocolate chips and chocolate icing. That you know, It's a little too easy. Because oh, the easier it is, the more you eat. Me. That's what gets me really scared. No, my sister tasted it, said, and she's a fudge maker, said it was really very good. Lois brought me some over. That's nice. Yeah, that's nice. Well, I'm, I'm proud to say we have the winner of the caregiver contest with us today, Sandy Robb. Hi. I am so glad <laughs> that you're here today. Um, in fact, Sandy actually is in one of my support groups. And uh, we're going to chat with you a little bit after we have our call and caller. And we also have Jeanette Donahue from... Random acts of flowers. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for having me. It's um, this so, is fun. I'm so glad you're here and I'm so glad to talk about your mission. We're gonna talk about that at the, the second half of the show. Um, but we have a call that's calling in a little while, but right before she calls in, before Ann calls in, I'd like to play this Christmas song um that was written by my second cousin or whatever in uh, New York. His name is Pete Camp. And there's five instruments on the song. He plays all five instruments. He wrote the song and he sings the song. So let's hear uh, you and the Christmas tree. Christmas and the light. 
sunlight and the snow. And I know oh, that if you ever need me, know that I will be sitting by the fireplace late at night, knowing that together it'll all be alright. You can get that song on Apple iTunes or Spotify, Pete Camp, You and the Christmas Tree. So we have somebody calling in in a couple of minutes. Her name is Ann Royer, and she's going to talk about the Meal Lifter Eating Aid, which I happen to have one here. Um, and, but I'm going to let her tell you all about it so the people that are watching us on Facebook and on YouTube can kind of get an idea of what the Meal Lifter is. She'll be calling in in a minute. She, um, she invented this to help her mother. So has she called in yet? No. Okay, so she'll probably be here so in a minute. Talk about our new listeners. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's right. You know, if I don't have her here <laughs> keeping me in line, I'm, I'm in big trouble. I don't do much. <laughs> just <laughs> it just pokes me. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to our newest listeners. We have Rosie in New Jersey, New Jersey. We have Gilda in Zephyr Hills, and we have Margie in Clearwater. Welcome, ladies. So you know what I always say: there's always room around the Connecting Caregivers Radio table table for more listeners and more partners. Um, you can hear us, like I said before, on AMFM, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Apple iTunes, out on the corner. Oh. You know, wherever they'll take us. So I believe our caller has called in. So just hold on for a second. Hi, Ann. Hi, Linda. How are you? Joyful and grateful. How are you? Uh, very good. Just preparing <laughs> for preparing for the week. <laughs> yes, we all are. It's it's that time of the year. So I, I just showed a picture of the meal lifter on on um, Lynn has it. She's lifting it up right now, so you can see it on YouTube and you can see it on Facebook. Um, but Ann, please um. Tell us a little bit about your background and how you came up with the idea for the meal lifter and how it's used. Because um, I know this all started with helping your mom, right? Yes, actually, my mother-in-law. Okay. Um, my background uh, actually is, um, well, my husband and I raised our children in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and we're from Kansas City. We moved back here when Bob's mother's Parkinson's was really progressing and um, our children are grown and they have children and it's a great experience. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we came back and Bob's mother was in a senior living facility. She was a very elegant, wonderful lady, just the best mother-in-law. I loved her dearly. And uh, we brought her to our home for her birthday and for a birthday dinner with the family and her Parkinson's had really progressed and she was at the table in the dining room, beautifully dressed, you know, fixed her favorite meal. She, um, she wouldn't eat. And I, you know, just went over and discreetly asked her if there was a problem. And she said, yes, I spill everything down the front of my clothes. I can't get the food to my mouth. Um, and she was, you know, she was humiliated, and I felt terrible. So I simply went in to the den, brought back a stack of books. Mm -hmm. We kind of played with them for a minute, came to a certain, you know, height, put the plate up higher, and told Mary just to put her elbow on the table. And she was able to get her spoon or fork just to her mouth by just rotating right. her elbow, her, her forearm. And she ate her meal. We came up with a prototype. She, it was a very cr crude prototype <laughs> um, and uh, homemade. And she would put it on her walker and take it down to all of her meals. Oh, wow. At this point, she was in assisted living and she remained there, we believe, for a bit longer because she was getting her nutrition. She was eating. When she moved to skill, she took it there and she used it for a while. And then, obviously, she reached a point where she, she then had assistance. to yeah. have assistance. Um, you know, this just raises the meal a little over four inches, uh, but it makes such a difference. And I never thought, Linda, that 
we would be doing this. <laughs> um, <laughs> we decided after people asked us, you know, where they could get one. And the one we had was made out of wood. And obviously that was, you know, not great. We, um, we decided to look into designing what we have now. We designed it. We had it. We have it made. It's, it's manufactured in uh, Missouri. Mm -hmm. Uh, We live in Kansas city and it's polypropylene. It stacks. I like that it's so washable. Yes. It goes in a commercial dishwasher and um, the facilities that we, that have purchased these have really liked them for that reason. I mean, they don't, they don't collect any, you know, any food right. and they're easy to, to, uh, clean and they're not heavy. Right. They're not heavy. I'm sure you hear it um, all the time, but my husband, this is Lynn, by the way, my husband hi, had Lynn. Parkinson's and Oh boy, I wish I had this then. The, he had, I, I hear that often. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. But he, we got the weighted well, spoons and the weighted forks, but that soup, he would have been so, cause he likes soup every day. He would have been so happy to have this, and I would have been well, happier. <laughs> that I, I I have heard that you know, and also we have taken this to uh, several conferences. One recently was an OT conference at Rockhurst here in Kansas City, and these OTs and their students would say, "Oh my gosh, right? You know, I wish I had thought of that." Exactly. Or someone said, "We just." We will put, you know, magazines on the table and and lift the plate. But, yeah. you know, that's not sanitary and that doesn't really work. So Well, it doesn't look very this, nice either. You, you, There's a whole part of dignity with this. But even the thought of coming up with raising it, it never crossed my mind. I served a lot of sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, and I want you to know we, we presented this. Uh, it went into the catalog last January, uh, the direct supply catalog out of Milwaukee, and it fits their plate perfectly. It's a nine-inch plate. So they sell them to senior living facilities, rehab um, across the country, and uh, they they find that, um, well, they find it, they were selling it by a dozen, but we suggested they sell them just four a piece. Uh-huh. So they are selling them and without the plates, but they're selling them to the facilities that use their dishes. Okay. We have found that Ableware has a melamine lip plate that is cream colored that works. And then they also have a red plate, which I'd like to segue into this is great for Alzheimer's patients. Yeah, so we've discussed um, that before on the show, how important it is when someone with Alzheimer's or dementia, many times they, they stop eating. But it seems that when you put the food eating. on a red plate, it, it, it attracts them. Well, and we learned from the Alzheimer's Association that their field of vision starts to narrow. Yeah. yeah. And they really, you know, and, and we were told by, um, an Alzheimer educator that um, by putting your arm around this device, drawing it closer with the arm and then the red plate, they really, you know, it just... Could focus, yeah. Yes, it, 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 cognitively it works to, to locate what they need to do. So, um, yes, that's, that's kind of our story. It's so it's I so heard you simple. contacted the Michael J. Fox Foundation. What did they say about it? We did. We were so excited. They called, they sent us an email and asked if we could uh, talk to them for about 45 minutes. And we did. They don't endorse any products, mm-hmm. but they did say, that I have it on our website. They call it a very impressive tool. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> wow. That's so, a really I good thing. That, I was, I was, pretty excited about that we we are in in front of um the the national parkinson's um foundation right now well the one out in chicago actually Mm -hmm. and um we've we've just we have personally gone to probably over 80 
facilities. Uh, we've presented at several, as I mentioned, different, you know, OT conferences. Yeah. Um, That's we wonderful. Just, we, we just, um, I don't know how many people submitted, but we were selected as one of 10 innovators to attend the, uh, it's the AMDA Society for Acute and Long-Term Care Medicine. They have a Shark Tank competition in oh, April. Well, that's wonderful. <laughs> we'll be sending so, our, our positive energies your way. Well, thank you. But, you know, it's, it's just what, what makes us so happy is it really it Helps. can really change someone's meal time, which I think yep. is for a lot of people in senior living, that's, that's one of the happiest times during their day. Exactly. You know, to join their friends and mm-hmm. have a meal. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and even like you're saying with your family, but home with your family, yeah. you, you don't want to be embarrassed. You want to be comfortable. So I think this is wonderful. Where can our, our listeners find the meal lifting eater aid? Well, you can find it uh, for the, for the professionals direct supply has them for a set of four for $55. That's 1375 each. And then we have, um, We're in retail stores. And you you get it through your website too, right? Yes. Our website is Meal Lifter with the two L's, MealLifter.com. Okay. And all that information will be on my website. Okay. Wonderful. And they're $19.95 a piece, which. Well worth it. it. Yeah. Well worth it. I really don't think it's, I think it's pretty much right in the ballpark. I think it's perfect. Uh, Somebody. Linda, someone and then Lynn, someone told us at one of these meetings that they thought this was like meal uh, wheel on luggage. They said, you know, people drag their luggage uh, yeah. for years and years, and then all of a sudden it caught on. And we said, well, thank you. We we think that's quite a compliment. Yeah, that's very cool. <laughs> well, thanks so much for being with us today, Anne. And Anne was kind enough to send me to um, meal lifter eating aid. So uh, for all listeners out there, if you will. Make a comment on our Facebook page today or our YouTube channel or my website. You'll be put into a drawing to win one of these wonderful devices. So thanks so much, Ian. We'll be in contact soon. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Lynn. Happy holidays. Thanks. Have a delicious day. Thank you so much. Okay, so now we're here for the big caregiver contest winner, Sandy Robb. I received this in the mail. Now, when we have the caregiver contest, you just go to the website and you can nominate a caregiver. And um, in the beginning, when we first started the contest three years ago, we thought we would have to have a committee to pick a winner. But then as the winners started coming in, every single one is a winner. So we just put all the names in a hat and we pick one out. And Sandy happened to be the winner this month. And we we said I was very surprised. Yes, it's very cool. And and the person. I didn't even know I was nominated. The person that nominated (laughs) doesn't want you to know who they are either. She said that she's just a secret Santa elf. So. But what she wrote down is that Sandy Robb is an amazing caregiver. She cares for her mother-in-law who lives with her and has dementia. She's always patient and even and, and kind, even though at times I know she is very stressed. She works full time, takes care of the house, her oh. nephew, her husband, and her mother-in-law. But the one thing for sure is she always has a kind word, a hug, and a smile on her face. Sandy really deserves to be pampered. So welcome. Isn't that nice? Yeah, it's very nice. It's I don't know. You I can can't almost say cry. thank you. <laughs> you can't say thank you because she's secret. Yeah, yeah, well, if you're listening today, thank yeah, you there very you go. much. I'm sure she is. So um, what Sandy has won is um, eight hours of respite care that she gets to pick either from Maria's Adult Day Care or from Arden Quartz Memory Care or from Assisting Hands Home Care. And she gets a haircut from Nikki Rooney. And, Who just uh, cut my hair. Just cut your hair yesterday. Um, and a massage. And um, from Palm Garden has given her some dinner gift certificates, some restaurant gift certificates. And Lynn donated a Barnes & Noble card. And we have some totes and some things in there from the key markets. And we have a radio from the radio station. (gasps) And a whole bunch of other good stuff in there. And and some swag because we love swag. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm I'm just so blessed to be thought about and I'm, you know, to win. You know, there's lots of people that work hard at being caregivers and deserve 
today have Ever, they all deserve a break yes they, they deserve, deserve a break and it's so hard to take care of yourself and put yourself first yeah it just it really is, is. yeah it? sometimes it's nice to have somebody else make you do it yeah <laughs> and it's like okay i have this i've got to use yes, it exactly. <laughs> exactly all today no not all today but, so uh so while we're chatting a little bit here can you because you're in one of my support groups can you just tell all this is i wanted them to hear from you and not from me what's the benefit of a caregiver support group well, for me, it was actually knowing there were people out there going through the same thing, or even my situation isn't as bad as what some people's were. It was like, okay, it really helps you put things in perspective, and you get a lot of tips from people. I've changed the way I've done things. I've learned where to go look for information yeah. sometimes where I, I didn't know where to go look, even though you go look on the internet, but then a hundred thousand so things much. come up. Yes. You don't know where to go. Yeah. You know, which one to look at. And you don't have hours to sit there and look at everything. Yeah. So if somebody can kind of guide you to the right place. That's what we try to do. Yeah. That's what we try to do. We and, definitely and, and, and do. And a, the people in your group too are very helpful. They with tell me tips. stuff. I don't know. You know what it's like. Sometimes I do a support group. I barely talk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know that's very <laughs> unusual, but uh, no. Oh my god! Uh, uh, really? Sometimes it's just other Hell people. Hell froze over. Yeah. But everybody gets a chance too. Yeah. To share, either say what's happening that they you know need help with, or something good that happened. A lot of times, somebody just wants to share yeah. something good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. Well, thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate. Well, that. I thank you for the the gift. I'm. I'm no problem. It's like a Christmas gift there you early, go. you know. It's Christmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome so much. Right now, we need to hear from our wonderful sponsors because you know the deal. If you don't hear from them, you don't hear from me. So don't go away. We'll be right back on Connecting Caregivers Radio. Are you looking for compassionate and dependable home care for you or a loved one? Assisting Hands Home Care serving Pinellas and Pasco counties can help. The day came that taking care of my mother was no longer the best thing for me or for her. Between kids and a job, I couldn't give her the attention she needed and deserved, and I was overwhelmed. So I reached out to Assisting Hands Home Care. Now I can see what an important decision that was, and I feel confident that my mother has compassionate and dependable caregivers who help her to stay happy, healthy, and home. Today, I'm able to visit with my mother and enjoy our time together, which is exactly what we both needed. Assisting Hands Home Care. Call today for your free in-home consultation. In Pinellas, call 727-748-4211. In Pasco, call 813-280-4383 or visit assistinghands.com. When you can't do it all, give Assisting Hands a call. Arden Courts is an assisted living facility designed to care for those that are struggling with dementia or Alzheimer's, where families and residents can feel the freedom with a nurse on site 24-7. Arden Courts provides specialized memory care in a safe and nurturing environment. They recognize every individual's physical, mental, and social needs and provide a secure environment that fosters independence for as long as possible. Walking paths, visual cues, and home-like amenities invoke a sense of freedom and independence. At Arden Courts, their goal is to make your loved one as comfortable, independent, and healthy as possible. They offer 10 hours a day of activities and programming with a unique setting of a home-like environment and four theme houses. It warms my heart to see how happy the residents are. Please call or stop in to talk with a representative. Arden Courts of Seminole at 727-517-7800, Largo 727-559-8411, or Palm Harbor 727-771-1600. Give them a call. Vox Life realizes that people of all ages and walks of life are focused on wellness and optimal performance. Wellness consumers are looking for products that will enhance the quality of life and are asking for natural safe solutions for more energy, pain relief, and enhanced mobility. Well, Vox Life is the answer. Vox Life has harnessed the power of neuroscience and neuroactivation and spent six years developing HPT. HPT instantly improves the user's strength, energy, stability, balance, and range of motion while providing natural pain relief. And this is done so easily with their socks and insoles at a very affordable price. I know when I go to the gym, I can see the difference immediately when I have my Vox Life socks on. And they also have helped many of my caregivers and their families. For more information, go to www.voxlife.com 
slash caregivers. They've helped me and they can help you too. That's www.voxxlife.com slash caregivers. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them blue for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Okay, caregivers, now it's time for the caregiver affirmation. Take a minute, take a deep breath, sit down, close your eyes if possible, and just listen to these words. I know on my journey there is help and hope. I affirm that I am a good caregiver, that I try my best each day, and I recognize that I deserve to have my own needs met just as much as those for whom I care. I promise I will not allow myself to be consumed by my caregiving role. And I will set aside time in my busy schedule just for me. I am mindful of the other caregivers in my life, and I will let them know that I appreciate their efforts. I am grateful for the people that walk beside me. I will take good care of my own health physically and spiritually, drink enough water, eat quality foods, allow for time to rest and to exercise, laugh often, if only at myself, and seek medical attention for my own health concerns. I am who I am, and I allow others to be who they are. Today, I will add one item to my assisting angels list. Then if someone calls to say, let me know if there's something I can do, I will be ready to accept their offer and provide them with the opportunity to assist me. It is an honor to be of service of others, and I will not deny my friends and family this honor. Okay, think about it, caregivers. Yep, think about it. When somebody comes during this holiday season, they say, what can I do to help you? Or can I do something to help you? You say, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Not, no, I can do it. No, I'm okay. I, you just heard from a caregiver that was on the show a few minutes ago about how appreciative she was that someone actually just did something for her. So maybe you can just do something for them, not ask them what they need. Because many times when you ask them what they need, you just gave them one more thing to put on their list that they got to think about. Yes, absolutely. You know, and you're not sure what to ask for. So, you know, just go over and mow their lawn or just go over and bring their garbage cans in or, or whatever it is. Bring you know? some cookies. Bring some cookies. Go to the dollar store and buy a bunch of wrapping stuff and, and go over there and offer to wrap their presents for them. Just something little like that really makes a difference. And and the biggest gift you can give them is some time. So I, I love when I hear a caregiver that will tell me, you know, my, my girlfriend called me up and said, I'm coming over from two to four tomorrow. I want you to go away. She said, you know, I can, you can go out and take a walk. You could go sit in your bedroom. You can do whatever you want because I think that's what, care. you know, I remember one time years ago, a woman came to one of my speaking engagements. And I suggested caregivers to make a list of things they can accept help with. And she said, um, I made my list. I only put one thing on my list. And if anyone asks if they can help me, I say, if you can come over any afternoon between two and four and let me take a nap, that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. And her next line was, I'm pleased as punch to let you know that I'm now napping seven days a week and my husband is getting seven different visitors that I'd stop coming. Mm, so it's a win-win nice. win situation. Yeah, absolutely. You know. So, Jeanette, you have a, a, a very interesting background here. You were previously worked at <laughs> San Jose Elementary and you were the assistant general manager for the Dunedin Blue Jays. Yeah. And now wow. we're in the Mac of Flowers. So how did that happen? You know, I, I, I always I joke about how I was a teacher and then I went into the corporate world, and now I'm in the nonprofit world. So I said, politics next. But oh. Just kidding. No, not for me. But uh, nah, me yeah, either. I just, it's just the way my life just kind of was guided. So, so it, how did Random Acts, how did you get involved in it? How did it start? Give well, us the whole story. So Random Acts started about six years ago. And um, what we do is we re repurpose and recycle flowers from grocery stores, events, weddings. And we bring them, we re deconstruct them and then make arrangements and bring them out to the community. Um, we go to the hospitals, we go to assisted living homes, we go to hospice once a week. And um, as of now, we have, in the six years we've been open, we've served um, 90,000 people. 98,000. Wow. So, so, yeah. And it's just how I got involved was kind of interesting. I had a friend who actually is one of the original people who started it. And I love events. I love putting on events. She goes, would you ever come and help us fundraise? And so I started off small and then it just kind of grew. And now I'm 
full time working as the executive director. And I just love it. I love the mission. I love if you would have told me five years ago I'd be doing this. I would have been like, no way. But I I absolutely just love it. And just bringing smiles to people's faces and and the caregivers, too. You know, like when we go to hospice, a lot of times we're seeing the the families and it's nice for them to get see a different person to talk oh, to someone yeah. new and and get some flowers yeah I, so we just hear i hear that we have a call so let me just pick up the call and then we'll talk further hello okay. hello hello hi is um this is marilyn calling in support of random app hi marilyn hey Jeanette. <laughs> i just i just wanted to say you're talking to one of the biggest cheerleaders around um, we couldn't do what we do on a, on a weekly basis or a daily basis even without Jeanette and Monica doing what they do, as well as all the volunteers that come in. Um, I just had a short story. I met somebody the other night um, in Dunedin, and I said, yeah, I'm with Random Acts of Flowers. And they go, ah, you know, got all excited and, you know, waving their arms and all that. So my mother just got flowers from you guys. Well, I personally delivered those, but I wow. didn't cover that. Like you said, what a difference it made to my mother. Um, and that's what we do. And it, it's just, it's an, an incredible operation, uh, incredible um, organization. And again, uh, it's all kudos to to uh, Jeanette and to Monica and, and all the volunteers that come in. And for people like Marilyn, I mean, hi, Marilyn. I'm so happy to hear your voice. I'm shocked. But um, I'm like, who's calling? Um, I mean, she does everything. She drives because we don't really go down to like Pinellas Park and St. Pete as much as we can. And when we have extras, she always brings them down there and she arranges them at home. She's been a board member. She helps us with events. I mean, our volunteers are amazing. We are yeah, so blessed. Amazing. So blessed. We couldn't that's do it without great. them. Well, we have, it's nice to volunteer for something that's so cheerful. And, you know and, I mean? yeah. and it's so rewarding. I mean, Marilyn could tell you many, many stories, but I mean, I love hearing the stories and I love when someone calls us, especially when the men call, because, yeah. you know, a lot of times they're like, I've never received flowers in my life and this is wonderful and it ha- made them so happy. And, yeah. you know, that's, I love hearing that. Yeah. Because some people. And a lot of times they cry um, when we deliver them personally, you know, a lot of times the men cry because they say exactly that is that nobody's ever given me flowers before. And here I am in my nineties and you're walking in with flowers and they're crying uh, out of joy. So it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Just such a tiny little thing, how it can make such a difference for a person because some Absolutely. of those people, not only, not only did they not get flowers, they may not even get visitors. Absolutely. That's true. But it's so weird, that- isn't it? That women get men send women flowers. Now my dad was a flower person. So, so was my grandfather. So we would, you know, could give him flowers, but most men don't get them. And why? Yeah, right. It, they, they're they love it just as much they as do. they like yeah, surprises. They're beautiful. They smell nice. They're, Absolutely, make wonderful. you feel special. Well, we go to the VA once a month, and <laughs> we had a. We've now delivered eight thousand. Um, bouquets to the VA and majority of them are men and Maryland's been on that delivery as well. And we did our, Absolutely. we did a big press thing, went to 7,500 7, and the men were just like, just over, just loved it and just went on and on and on. And, mm. you know, and the like, vets are so grateful. They are. They're just so They're grateful. Just, I've had the opportunity to go on the honor flight and, and a few other things. They're so damn grateful. And we're like thankful for them, for their service, right, for everything so they've deserving. done. Right. And yeah. they're thankful to us. And I'm like, no, we, we want to thank you. It's so the least that we could do for you. Yeah. yeah. So it's great. Yeah. They really are. And as a veteran myself, I always kind of seek out the female veterans because there's so few of us um, yeah. that are usually in the hospital. And yeah. just touching their arm and saying, thank you for what you've done in your life. I mean, it's, it's, it's an incredible, it's such powerful words in a short period of time. Well, you know, when I, when I had the opportunity to go on the honor flight, my woman was 88 years old and she was from the Korean oh. War in the Marines. So, oh, wow. And, and so I said to her, so what did you do there? And so she zipped her lip and she said, I was in communications. Can't tell you anything, Linda. I might have to kill you. <laughs> But she was just that day that we were in Washington, D.C., because like you said, there weren't too many females is so many right. of the children and people were coming over to her and, and saying thank you That's to her. Great. And it was just such an overwhelming Aww. day. I remember at the end of the day, she said, don't do anything nice to me. This is too much. You know, I'm going to have a heart attack. But <laughs> it was really, really wonderful. So thanks so much for calling in. I hope to meet you in the future because Lynn and I are going to try to do some help. If you come to Random you Acts, you'll, you'll meet Marilyn. Yes. <laughs> she lives there. That would be awesome. We'll see you back. Thanks, Thanks Marilyn. Marilyn. Have a delicious day. Bye.
Bye-bye. So explain to me exactly like the whole, so where you're located. So we're located in Dunedin, okay. Florida, and we're right uh, across from the Coke plant, not far. We have a warehouse there and we're very lucky we get it donated. So that's very, lucky. I mean, we're, I, I tell you, I feel like we have angels all around us all the time. And every time, like we have a big delivery, we don't know if we're going to get flowers and we always do. I mean, it's nothing's ever not happened. It's right. just amazing. And that's my motto. I always say it will work. It will work out. We're going to make it work yep. because we'll figure, it out. we'll figure it out. And if you know, if we have to do bouquets from this to this, we'll make it work. Right. So, you know, it's just, and when you get the vases and, everything. and that's another thing. We've never had a problem with vases. I mean, people are constantly bringing them in. We've now, like, if we go to Arden Cores or Palms of Largo, you know, they know to save them for us. So we repurpose those. And then um, we're, we started doing a lot of team building activities with um, businesses. Mm -hmm. And we encourage them to do a vase drive. So they bring in Perfect. hundreds and hundreds of vases. And, you know, we had a base drive with a company recently and they brought in over 400 bases and they came in, they actually processed them themselves. So it's a good little team bonding. Yeah. And I mean, we had a little boy last week. He brought in over 200 bases oh. and he, he, he um, collected $300 <gasps> and then he came in with his parents and they, he already washed them. He brought them in wash. We love those. Yeah. <laughs> but he washed them already. And then he came in and made um, 30 bud vases. And we sent him to a, a facility down the road with his family. And it was he just. He got to deliver it was them. It was so cute. And he was the cutest kid. Oh, my goodness. Ian, that was his name. Ian, he was so cute. God bless you, Ian. I you know. know. And it, everybody can make a difference with just such a tiny little thing. Yeah. And it, and we started a program called Hope's Blossoms a couple of years ago where we go to the schools. And it's. You know, they make one that we take to a facility that day and they make cards and they put it on the flowers and then they make one that they take home and we encourage them to give it to somebody, not mom and dad, easy, and mom, dad, you think need it, but we encourage it, maybe a neighbor, maybe ah. somebody. And then they have to write an essay about how it made them feel and how it made oh, the people cry. feel. And I mean, it's just, it's so important to teach the younger people about volunteering, about giving back to the community and and, and having being empathy kind. and being sympathy and being because kind. A lot of kids, they are afraid to go to a neighbor. Or they're just not taught that anymore. You know, we're yeah. all taught, but not in a structure of, you know, this is what, you know, and, and how did it make you feel? And they, and they're like, oh my gosh, it made me feel so good. And my, you know, so-and-so cried or so-and-so made me, gave me a big hug or the smile on their face and the essays are just I love them. I should have brought a couple. Yeah. When you come see me, I'll show you some of them. Yeah, that's just great. You know, and it makes the kid feel good and it makes the parents feel good. It makes the person feel good. It opens up a whole door. Do we have someone else on the line? No? Okay. Just you. Just you. <laughs> <laughs> I get confused sometimes. Um, so where do you get the flowers from though? Like, well, our number one is Publix. We pick up from God about 16, 16 stores around the you area. Pick them up? We have volunteers. Okay. We have volunteers. Um, we have one van. So that's, we have a couple that comes, we pick up Mondays and Wednesdays and then Mondays and Wednesdays afternoons, we um, deconstruct and then Tuesday and Thursday, we make the arrangements and then we deliver them that, that afternoon. And then Friday, Wednesday mornings, like our base processing day. And, but um, we have two sprouts, we have whole foods, we have um, Hall's wholesale. They're amazing. They're down in St. Pete and they give to us every Wednesday. And then we have the events. And Do you ever have like. Funeral parlors? We we get a lot of celebration for life. We have a lot of partnerships with them. Because those flowers are hardly every... You know, when I used to it's, live on Atlantic Avenue. When I had an apartment when I was younger, there was a funeral parlor right down the block. And they used to put all these flowers in their dumpster. You know, they realize now because we have to have partnerships where they sponsor us um, all every month. Because they don't have to have the big dumpsters. And they know they put it in their family's packet so they know... And the families, a lot of them are from out of town or, yeah, you know, right. snowbirds or something. And they don't know what to do. And they're like, but what we do when they, when we get it, we get the family's names. We take pictures of the flowers and then we take pictures of the actual arrangements. And we'll say out of your flowers that you donated, we got 152 bouquets wow. or whatever it may be. Right. If it's 25 or whatever it may be, right. we take pictures. We, um, we'll put the family's name. We don't say, you know, we just say right. from the family of so-and-so and, and the families love it. I mean, they know that it went on to yeah. make other people happy. In so, memory of their loved one. Right. Absolutely. So they're not just sitting there or, you know, going remember, in the garbage. Yeah. Years ago, I remember they used to dump them all on the grave. 
You know, when they yeah. lowered it, they used to throw all And a lot of times it's just... But then what if you're being cremated or whatever? Who knows? I don't a know. lot of times it's just really overwhelming. I mean, they're going through a really hard time and they they see all this, they don't know what to do. No, and it's right. nice to know that there's something that they know that can make a difference in someone else's life. Yeah. Yeah. And most definitely. All right. It's time to hear from our wonderful sponsors. So don't go away. We'll be right back on connecting caregivers radio. Choosing the right chiropractor is an important choice to make. Located in Seminole, the Alexander Spine Center team is trained on the latest chiropractic treatments and technologies. At Alexander Spine Center, you'll find chiropractic and physical therapy care that is safe, effective, and a natural approach to pain and other health related issues. Chiropractic unlocks your body's potential and natural healing process to ensure your life is a healthy life. We treat clients from the womb to the tomb. Call 727-397-3000 for a free consultation today or visit our website at www.alexanderspinecenter.com. They take good care of me twice a week. And did you know they got the Reader's Choice Award for 2019 for the best chiropractic in Pinellas County? So check them out. Arden Quartz is an assisted living facility designed to care for those that are struggling with dementia or Alzheimer's, where families and residents can feel the freedom with a nurse on site 24-7. Arden Quartz provides specialized memory care in a safe and nurturing environment. They recognize every individual's physical, mental, and social needs and provide a secure environment that fosters independence for as long as possible. Walking paths, visual cues, and home-like amenities invoke a sense of freedom and independence. At Arden Courts, their goal is to make your loved one as comfortable, independent, and healthy as possible. They offer 10 hours a day of activities and programming with a unique setting of a home-like environment and four theme houses. It warms my heart to see how happy the residents are. Please call or stop in to talk with a representative. Arden Courts of Seminole at 727-517-7800, Largo 727-559-8411, or Palm Harbor 727-771-1600. Give them a call. Guaranteed to make you laugh through your tears, Linda Burhan's book, Good Night and God Bless, is filled with humor and heartfelt inspiration to aid anyone facing the challenge of caring for a loved one at the end of life. Her story offers hope for human strength and understanding of weaknesses during a difficult time. Life doesn't normally prepare us to become a loved one's caregiver. When it happens, it's usually sudden. A diagnosis of an illness, age-related frailty, dementia, and life suddenly is anything but normal. And because we don't even know what we don't know, where do we turn to for help or guidance? In Connecting Caregivers, answers to the questions you didn't know you needed to ask, Linda offers information, education, and inspiration from her own experience and from experts whose advice, practical tools, and personal stories will empower and guide you. Make sure to add these inspiring books to your collection today. Available on Amazon.com. Don't turn it off now. You need this stuff. Tampa Bay's Tan Talk Radio Network. And we're off. No, not really. You know what that means? That means you got to get your paper and pen because Lynn's got good stuff to tell you, right, Lynn? I do. It's my turn now. Yeah, it is. Yes. On January 15th from 10 to 11.30 a.m. with registration at 9.30 at Arden Courts of Largo is a free dementia education seminar, the Dementia Dance, when to lead and when to follow with guest speaker Arlinda Burhan. <gasps> That's me. Yes. RSVP, please, to 727-559-8411. It's going to be a great seminar, and we'll have some laughs while we're there, so please come. Yes. Is that the first time you're doing that one? That's the first time. Oh, That's my so new you have to come. It's a this new year. one. Yeah. Then also on January 15th from 10 to 11 a.m. with registration at 9.30, Arden Courts of Seminole is having a, oh, but you, a free seminar on navigating your way through long-term benefits. Oh, guest speaker, attorney D. Rep. Delotes III will help you find, get, and pay for long-term care. RSVP to 727-517-7800. That would be very interesting mm -hmm. helpful. On January 22nd at 9.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. at Our Lady of Grace Catholic Church in Beverly Hills is the 6th Annual Coping with Dementia Family Caregiver Conference. Expert speakers, including Arlinda Burhans, <laughs> 
will address your caregiver needs. There will be information tables and a light lunch is included. <coughs> Please RSVP to 352-422-3663. That'll be great because I don't get to see my friends up there too often. So come, there's going to be great speakers there. Yeah, you enjoy doing that one. Yeah. On January 22nd from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Oakhurst United Methodist Church on Park Boulevard in Seminole is a seminar on practicing grace while living with dementia. Please join Dr. Kate in her mission to create a world where all those living with dementia thrive. RSVP to Vanessa at 727-492-3050. Boy, January packed full of I got like things. seven speaking engagements in January. Oh, wow. oh, but please wow. go. So I just, one thing, I read this the week before last, I think. I just want to repeat it if I can find it. Um, goodness gracious me. Um. It's a poem about Alzheimer's, and I want you to think about this during this holiday season when you're running around and you're trying to do everything and you're trying to make everything perfect. The most important thing is to spend some time with your loved one because that's what they really need. So this is a poem about Alzheimer's. Do not ask me to remember. Don't try to make me understand. Let me rest and know you're with me. Kiss my cheek and hold my hand. I'm confused beyond your concept. I am sad and sick and lost. And all I know is that I need you to be with me at all costs. Do not lose your patience with me. Do not scold or curse or cry. I can't help the way I'm acting. Can't be different, though I try. Just remember that I need you, and the best of me is gone. Please don't fail to stand beside me. Love me till my life is done. So please think about this during the holidays. What the most important part of the holiday is, is spending time with your loved one. It's not the decorating. It's not the food. It's not the nothing else. It's just spending some time. And when you sit down and you spend some time and you talk to them, hold their hand. Hold their hand, touch their arm, hug them, please. Because sometimes for weeks, these people don't get touched. Many people live by themselves. They're all at home alone and they don't, and they don't even know how to reach out for it. So please do that. So Jeanette, you were telling me during break about some other stuff that's going on, what you're doing. Tell our listeners yeah. about this. So I was talking about our floral therapy that we do. And we started doing that about a year ago. We start with Mies Manor and we take random acts of flowers to them. So they get to, we've done continuing care, we've done the independent, and we bring all the flowers and the vases and the shears and the aprons, and they get to have the experience and make their bouquets. And we call it floral therapy because, you know, it's proven that it, it's like a therapy. It's it's soothing. It, you know, it. what I was saying about the memory care is why we love it so much is like, it brings back a memory. Right. Like they'll take a smell and it brings back a memory. And I've always heard the best stories when we're doing things yeah. like that. And it's just, you know, they spark something. It's always a, a, a good memory. Yeah. And it's a simple so, thing. Yeah. But we also, we started doing, it's called um, Flowers After Hours. It's kind of like the painting with a twist. We have a florist. You come in and we have some snacks and we have some wine and we, um, we're there. There. <laughs> and um, we always have different themes. So we had like recently we had, um, we did a centerpiece for Christmas centerpiece. And then we had like a lemon. So we, we lined the vases with lemons and we put, you know, you get to bring up bouquet back to, to your home. And then we also make another one that we send out. So that's a lot of fun. You can bring your friends and it's a way that we fundraise. And, and where can people find information about that? So on our website, it's um, our random acts of flowers, Tampa Bay, or you dot org, or you can go to our Facebook. Facebook's probably the best. Facebook, Instagram, which is RAF Tampa Bay, and see what we're doing. We're always doing something. What does yes. that cost to do that? Um, forty dollars, and yes. it and it, you get a whole. Bo- yeah, it's oh. like, it's, and you get snacks and fun, and it's it's a really fun night. And I've I've had mothers and daughters come. I've had friends come. We yeah. actually had a private party recently for um, it was um one of our friends put together a party and had her friends out and had about thirty people that came and it I was fun. It, it was I love it. so we, we love doing that. And people can also collect vases for you or anything like that. We take them all the time. We're open Monday through Friday. Um, nine to five, and I it, when if we happen not to be there for a delivery or something like that, there we have a place in the back of our building where you can just drop them off. We have bins back there that you can put them in. And I, so I know you all have vases underneath your kitchen sink or somewhere in the closet there that you want to get rid absolutely. of. Absolutely, and just think you could donate it to somewhere that you know that'll really make somebody happy. Yes, so make really make that keep them out of the different. landfill. Give them to us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, what are your plans for the new year? Anything new you're going to add this year? 
Yes, <laughs> we're actually doing a huge event. Uh, January 25th, we're doing Gasparilla on the Gulf. We're like, why does Tampa Bay get to have all the fun? So we're doing it here. It's going to be at the Fenway. And it's going to be just a lot, a lot of fun. And it's something new we're doing, but it's getting, it's very popular. Invitations are going out soon. And I encourage people to go on our website, check, check it out. It's going to be, we're going to have a band. We're going to have beads. We're going to have a, the smallest golf parade ever. <laughs> so we're going to have a parade and it's just going to be a lot of fun. That's really good. So that's, that's something really we're really good. looking forward to. It's new. I have a great committee. I have great people who's helping us um, make this a success. That's wonderful. So we're excited. You know what? I always say I am so blessed to be in this Tampa Bay area because there really are people here that put their money where their mouth is. They want to make a difference and they do it. We just got a big sponsorship from, from Pinch Penny yesterday, which I'm really excited wow. about. So, uh, yeah, they came through. And, I, I mean, I'm just really – I love getting new people that get to learn about us and hear about us because yeah. we're still fairly young, but we're out there. So yeah, people have now when I go places, they've at least probably heard of us, but yeah. it's, it's fun to tell people who we are. Now, if there's, a, if there's a community that's looking to have some flowers that doesn't have some flowers, can they contact you and say they'd like yeah, to have and, some for and their we, seniors? Or? And we do. And on Fridays, especially, we'll, we'll call, we have people that will call and we, we can give flowers to them if we have them and they can do their own activities. So we're, uh, Monica, who's um, it's just me and Monica, we're a two man show, and she um, b- basically deals with all the volunteers, and she works with all the facilities, and the activity director- directors all know her, and they call her, and we yeah. we do our best to serve whoever we can. Yeah. We don't, we definitely don't want them to go to waste. No, no. So no. every year um, Thanksgiving we um, deliver bud vases to meals on wheels and they take it with them oh that's so very like cool. we try to partner up with different places yeah. um you know um palms of largo we were going to do an uh an, uh activity with them at night so i mean we're so flexible it's just yeah. us too and we we try to make everything work where our thing is we're going to make it to yes we don't know how we're going to get there but it's always yes i love that <laughs> so, oh. uh, i'll figure it out <laughs> Well, it's been a pleasure having you on the show today. I and and, and you guys we love making me. new friends. Yeah. We're gonna come. We're gonna hang out with you and do some good stuff. Come by, and anybody can come by for a tour. Okay. I always say come Tuesday or Thursday mornings because that's where all the magic happens. And what's great too, if you have like a women's group or something and you're looking to do mm-hmm. something different, hook up with her. Go in there Absolutely. and check it out. Because the, the people are always looking to find out about new things. Great. Thanks so much for tuning in today. You know how much I appreciate your time. We're coming up on the Christmas holiday. We are. I won't be here next week. No, you won't be here. I'm going to miss you, though. Off to Boston. Off Someone to else Boston. have to keep you in line. Yeah, but you're going to be freezing, so I'll buy I at least I won't be freezing. Um, so thank you to our listeners for tuning in. I know your time is not easy. I know that you could be going through a lot of difficult things with the, the next week that's coming up. Please remember what's most important. What most important is your loved one. Not all the decorations, not all the presents, not all the special food, not all anything else. The most important time is spending them because that's what you're going to remember. And one last time, I'm going to remind you, please, if you're having a lot of people to your home, find some quiet space, a quiet room where your loved one can go if they're a little bit overwhelmed because it'll make the day much easier for them. And then maybe you can take turns one at a time going in and just spending some one-on-one time. I think it's it'll make your day a whole lot better. So we'll see you again next week. Remember, God loves you all the time and have a delicious day. <laughs> Christmas and the lights and the snow